My name's Tom Kerr now. I'm going to be running a training session. Let me go back to our screen here. And uh, it's on our DC products, how to actually commission our DC drives. As you see on the website here up at bardak.com, we have uh, from 20 horsepower up to about 2,000 horsepower in our standard drive package, as well as PLXDs that control external stacks. And you'll use the same procedure that we're going to be going through today on all those different products. Now, um, hopefully this is interactive, uh, uh, an interactive session. If you have any questions, feel free to jump in and, uh, and bring it up or text me through the chat window, and I'll bring them up and try to answer questions along the way. So I'm going to put this uh, presentation of our DC drives to the side and just go to driveweb.com, which is our primary website where we support our drive web products, which includes the uh, Savvy software, which we're going to be using today to do our commissioning. So you see the, um, you can download, I just want to highlight to you guys that, I'm just going to circle it up here, the Get Savvy link at driveweb.com. If you go to that, to the website and click that link, you can download the software we're going to be using free of charge and uh, actually use it for, with your DC drive. You can use it with a standalone DC drive with, with or without our Speedy product, which is a board that we added add to the drive to actually, I'll just show you real quickly. If we go down to the, to the, D, the uh, Speedy product, there's an option board that fits into the drive that you see here, which brings it into the, the DC drive into the drive web world which allows us to use either the micro USB port that's built in or Ethernet to interact with the, the drive directly with Savvy. But you can also use the serial port that's built into the DC drive. You don't have to have this board installed on the drive to actually use what we're going to be going through. So I'm going to put the screen to the side and I've got in my uh, training room, I've got a DC drive and, a, and one of our DW240 units actually controlling the terminals. So the, the, this will actually do the control of us the, doing our quick start we're going to go through and actually go into uh, the details of commissioning a drive. Now let me do a quick screen snapshot of uh, who we've got attending here so I have them in my records. And then what we'll do is we'll get started. So um, I'm going to bring in a couple of pictures from our, uh, give me one second here. We're going to bring in our, we have some cameras in there so we can actually see what we're doing. And if we go into here, we'll have, this is our DC drive we're going to be interacting with. And I'm going to put it over to the side so we just have a little more room to work. And we also have a, um, let me just do something else and then we'll be able to open another instance. And then we're going to open another instance of that and we're going to look at it, uh, the actual display on the front of the drive. Okay. In this other instance, I've just got to change one setting here. Okay. That worked well. And let me just type one uh, thing real quick. I had to close this while we are having our, our network difficulties. So let me just type in what I need here. Okay, and this is our display on the drive, so we can actually read that display while we're doing some of this, so you can learn a little bit about the diagnostics of the drive while we're doing our thing. Okay, we'll put these over to the side and refer to them as we get through the startup. So as you, so we, we've, I've already got these in Savvy, and I'm using actually Ethernet to talk to them, but they, I've got actually a drive on my desk that I can connect to a little later if you want to see the, the serial version. The, the windows and all you're going to be seeing are all the same 
regardless of which method you use. But I wanted to first get into a couple of basics about uh, commissioning. So if we go to the, the motor nameplate data, this is going to be the first thing we're going to need to go in and commission this drive. Okay. Now that may be a little hard to read di distance wise. So I've got another picture here where I've highlighted the actual parts of the nameplate that are important to us. And I'll try to zoom in so you can see these a little better. So we're going to need uh, basic properties of the motor, which will be the the armature voltage you see. Uh, let me get my highlighter out. So here's the armature voltage right here, 500 volt armature. Our speed range of the motor, which is 1750 to 20, 2300. Okay. We see that it's a shunt wound motor if we go to the left a little bit. And I'm going to have to erase some of those arrows. Go back into pointer mode. So we've got a shunt wound motor. It's rated at 300 volts for the, the field. And then we've got the amperage for base speed, which is 0.72, and um, full speed of 2300 or 0.39. And we'll set the drive, the armature current is 9.0 amps. It's a little Reliance motor, as you see on the nameplate. So we're going to need that information a little later when we get into the actual commissioning of the drive. We're going to need those numbers. Now this is uh, this drive you see over here. Actually, I'm commuting to commuting into in the training room. Now, when you go into the 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 drive, either through the serial port built into the drive or through Ethernet, there'll be a little quick start icon over. As you see, I'm highlighting on the left hand side. When I open that up, it's going to walk you through the actual steps of the commissioning program. Okay, so I'm going to click that and we'll get started. And then it gives you a warning before you begin. This is just like the document that comes in the documentation pack that's in the drive. And depending on whether it's a power drive, which you see to the right here, or just a chassis, meaning the uh, power drive is one of the package drives where we, we actually have, in addition to the drive uh, power module, we also have fuses, contactors, everything else you need to get uh, the installation up and running. Now, if you're doing your, your own panels and the like, you'll be using the chassis drive path. But they're identical. I'll we'll just go into the power drive because that's what I have, except for the boundary about parts that are included in the package. Now, in the power drive, I've got the contactor, the fusing, all the control signals are brought out, and the red dotted line is included in the power drive. Now, we're going to be commissioning just a, a it's right, this drive we're doing is the smallest frame size. It's a, a PLX15 derated to 9 amps through the uh, jumpers in the drive. And um, we're just going to be commissioning this drive from uh, start to finish. And the only, we're only going to be using the control terminals you see between these are the power, the power diagram. We have the field down here, it's 300 volts, um, the armature loop the contactor that's controlled by the drive internally, and then the fusing accordingly. Here's a contactor up above. We go to the right. This is the basic control wiring that you need to do to turn the motor. And this is all documented in about an inch thick manual that comes with the drive or the quick start, which is only two pages. I'll just show you real quickly while I've got the quick start on your mind. We go down here to the, the quick start this is the one that comes with the drive, the quick start that comes with the drive, and it goes through all the, in four pages, you go through the entire commissioning process, which the quick start built into the software uh, makes it a little more intuitive to do that and a lot easier than punching the buttons as you see here. We'll get back to that if we need to, but. So we've got our drive wired into the training room. The main control inputs you see are the co-stop, the enable or run referred to different ways, the jog or the start. These are called the control inputs and they're these these inputs to the left that you see here, okay? And they're related to basic functioning of the drive. They do all the control behavior that you uh, 
you need to interact with to get the drive uh, turning the motor. Now, they, they're all in the descriptions here, but effectively it go, boils down to the coast stop. If you open that up, it's a permissive. If you open it up, it's going to drop, it's going to quench the drive's SCRs and drop the contactor out immediately. It's for a, a category zero type of behavior after you maybe ramp down to zero in a category two type stopping uh, set sequence. So when you open that up, it's not based on the firmware or anything. It's built based on the transistor in the drive that actually drops the contactor out. Now the two control inputs, 32 and 33, that are start and jog, these are the ones that bring in the contactor um, if the coast is already made. So if the, the start will, when it start, you'll be it's a maintained start. So as long as it's on, it'll continue to run, and when you open it up, it'll ramp to zero. Uh, the jog is a momentary, generally, and then when you press the button, it'll ramp to the jog speed on a different ramp, and when you open it up, it'll ramp down to zero and be ready to go in e one other mode, either the start or the combo mode. There's uh, different choices based on the sequence of these terminals. And the run enable is like an SCR enable, which if you have a DC contactor on your motor, that'll have to be interlocked through the contactor so you don't try to produce current before the uh, contactor actually seats. You don't want to draw an arc through your circuit and have a nuisance fuse blowing. And the smaller drives, uh, the frame one drives, which are the PLX15 through the PLX50, that can generally be jumpered to 24 volts unless you have a DC contactor. Once you get into the bigger drives, the contactors take longer to pull in and the built-in delay may uh, you want to make sure you, the built-in delay can cover the, the contactors, but most people just interlock it to the contactor. We do on our bigger power drives automatically when we build the power drives. So this is the basic controls that are where I'm actually got a, that other module that you see in my device directory that, um, let me just do a new window so you can see the device directory again. This control module, this is one of our speedies, a 240 speedy. It's got all the control features to actually turn these terminals on and off in our demonstration here remotely. So it's running from the terminals. I'm just using our product to control the terminals, as we'll see a little later. Okay. Now as we go through these arrows, we can go back and forth through this quick start to any page we want. So this is where our basics come into play. <clears throat> We need to set up the, uh, the actual uh, motor nameplate data as we saw it over here. Now I've created a, a little backup copy for a little easier to read for you guys. So if we look at the, uh, this little page here, I'll put it over here. These are the actual parameters that are off that nameplate if you can't make it out from the pictures back here. Okay? So it's a this is a 15... Uh, KW 36 amp drive that's recalibrated for 9 amps to derate it to, to get in the sweet spot for this motor. It's a 5 horsepower, 500 volts, so we're going to put in, we see the first parameter, parameter number 2 is the amperage, so we're going to put 9 amps in there for the armature current, okay? We're going to put the field amps you see over here, is, we're going to go for base current, which is 0.72, okay? Now you can get to all these through the front panel. These, you'll, if you're looking at the front panel, uh, you'll see these values change as you're actually entering the values in Savvy. Now we're going to put, we're going to go to base speed on both of these values for now. We'll, when we go to encoder feedback, we'll actually change it so that we can get to the extended speed range of the motor up to the, the 2300 speed. Armature voltage is 500 volts. We're actually a little higher than this. We're at 480 on our supply. We want to leave it on motor one. You just want to confirm it's on motor one because there's a, a feature built into the drive that can select two completely different sets of motor parameters. You want to make sure your primary is on motor one. If you start, if you use that feature for motor two, you can read about it in the manual, but it's a way to swap all the parameters for two motors. So one parameter, if you're stopped, you can actually swap the motor setup. It's a feature that comes in handy on occasion. And then the last thing is the rated voltage. 
okay, or the field voltage. Now, this is a clamp. It's, this drive controls by current of the field. It's going to try to control the, the 0.72 amp that we calibrated it for. Now, if you start having some winding, shorting, or the like, this voltage uh, value down here, parameter 100, let me just zoom in so you can see it. That actually is um, a clamp on the output. So we're going to try to limit that to a reasonable number based on the voltage of the the 90% would be for a 230 volt motor, not a, 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 a 480 volt motor. And we did the calculation per the equation here. Let me zoom out a little bit so you can see the equation. So we took the rated field volts, 300, you see over here to the right. I got a question here. Let me see what. Somebody still says they can't hear anything. Um, is anybody else having trouble or am I talking to myself? Brian, can you uh, hear or you still can't hear? Charles Martin has audio. Okay, I'm getting reports that the audio is working, so it may be on your end, Brian. So, Byron, I'm sorry. Okay, everybody's good that I can tell. Let me just get that to the side. If you have any other problems, please leave a message. I'll notice it as I go through the present. It's on my screen here, but you guys don't see when I get a message. So as we look at this, uh, so for this, this field down to calculation, actually down here, we just divided the 300 volts by the 480, which is our supply, and that works out to 62.50 in the uh, in the uh, parameter 100 over here. So we're going to set that to the clamp so that we don't over, you know, if windings start to shorten the motor, we don't want to just burn it up or the like. We'll limit the volts so it won't exceed the rated volts, and hopefully the motor will be preserved. So this particular clamp doesn't apply. That'll give you 300 volts at 480. If you hit that clamp, normally you'll be well off of that clamp. Now I'm going to about hit the home button in Savvy. This is a, there's a whole another video up at our website on how to drive the tools that um, we do a class. I actually have one scheduled for uh, next month. And if you're interested in that, just send me an email from the previous emails and we'll get you scheduled. So we've set up the basics, and we'll go to the next step. And you see this little adornment with a little warning sign on it and a save? That just tells me I need to save parameters. And you see it over in the window and Savvy over here. So all I have to do is hit this button, and it's just like going to the front panel of the drive, and the parameters are written to, to, uh, to the EEPROM or, that's built into the drive to store the information. So now if I turn the power off, I wouldn't lose any of my work. As I'm typing these in, they're going into RAM instead of uh, um, memory that's persistent. Okay, so once you do the save and that adornment goes away, you're ready to continue. Now this, I've already got the power on, as you can see here. This is our power. It's actually a little lower than normal today at 460. These are your control inputs. I'm going to make this sort of big. But we're going to make it so we can see the, the display back here. Okay. Now as we go into our, I've got some controls that I can turn off and on here. I'm going to bring up what's called Savvy Panel in that device. And if I go into the control module, I can exercise these inputs like you would test your I.O. out in the field, actually. I'll just show you real quick. So um, if we were to turn, we want to check the, the inputs that they work properly before we try to turn the motor or commission it. So I'm going to make this a little bigger so you can see my controls. And so one of these is the co-stop. Okay, that's, that's the terminal, terminal 34 you see up here on the screen. So see, I can turn it off and on with my controls and savvy through my dot digital output in my um, controller. And now, with that off, I can exercise these other ones. The co-stop, if that's not made, I can do anything I want with these other signals and prove that they're actually working before we actually get into running the motor. So if I turn uh, the run SCR off, that turns off the 31, which is a run input. 
Okay. If I want to, that's my jog input. You see a change in state. And then here is my start input. It's not pulling the contactor in, but I'm exercising it because the coast is open. That's a permissive that will in effectively inhibit all the other ones. So I can tell all my I.O. is working properly from this little screen in our quick start. Now I'm ready to keep going. I've got control of the motor by these control inputs. We'll go to the next step. Now let me reset these to default because... You want to see this after this is an auto tune. I forgot to clear, but we'll just clear it real quick right now. So these are the default settings for the auto tune. Now the auto tune is a static auto tune. It doesn't rotate the motor, um, and that it, what it does is it turns the field off, and then pumps some current through the motor and the leads to the motor. You might see this creep a little bit as it's uh, actually auto tuning because I don't have any load on that shaft. But I've got some numbers we recorded before to see how accurate it is based on the even with the shaft rotating. Normally you want enough, uh, the only reason it would rotate with the field off if there's some residual magnetism in this motor that produces enough flux for the motor to start actually producing some torque with these pulses of current we're sending down. But um, let me just go ahead and we'll, we'll get set up for to actually doing the auto tune. Now, but, um, if you look at the step one, we got our coast is off. You see the little circles around here. They should be the color that's around a circle before I go to step two. So the coast is off, which I have to turn on. So I'm going to turn on the coast. Now we got the coast on, the, the uh, temperature motor thermistor inputs on. That's a jumper in the case of my, I don't have it wired to my motor, but I've got to have that tied to common in order for that to go green for me. And then I've got an alternating one around the run because this is a, sometimes this will be interlocked to your, uh, when you have a, a DC interlock, that'll be open at this point. But when you start it and the, con the auxiliary contact closes, that would be turned green on the start signal. Since I don't have a contact or interlock, I'm just going to leave that on that's why it's red or green. It can be in either state based on your circumstances. The jog and the start are both off. Now, they have to be off before I turn on the auto-tune flag. So I'm going to turn that on here. Now, this says the drive is in auto-tune mode. So it won't run a motor norm as it normally would because it's, it's when the next time when I start it, it's going to go in an auto-tune, and you'll see these numbers will reset and start tuning the current loop and then when it's finished it'll drop the contactor out okay and take the drive out of auto-tune mode so we're, we're ready to go here I'm just going to move this over here and we're going to go ahead and uh, start the start the auto-tune with the start signal now you may be able to hear that um, I'm not sure if that would come through the the uh, system here or not because the uh, my I'm in my headset. I don't know if you can actually hear the uh, motor turning, but it is rotating as you can see there. With no load, it starts creeping up in speed. Let's see if we get a decent number. I know what these numbers ended up being. It's going to be in the 60s before it actually stops. There we go. So it disabled it. So now it's coasting down to zero speed. So those are pretty accurate from what I did when I had a load on the end of, end of the motor shaft uh, yesterday when I was setting this up. And so these numbers are what the drive came up with with the, the armature circuit and the leads to the motor. And you shouldn't have to do this again unless you change the motor. Those numbers should be pretty good. As far You can always manually tune the drive, but if uh, the auto-tune works, uh, we can move on and move to the next step. So you'll see it dropped the contactor out and the motor stopped turning, but my start's still on, so I'm going to make sure it doesn't clear that start. You have to, and let, your logic would have to turn it back off or you turn it off manually like I just did. Now we're ready to go into run mode. Okay, I've got a little uh, message here. Let's see what it is. I'm not sure what that means. My screen shows that BD has a speaker 
audio off. Um, Byron's still having trouble. Sorry I can't help you, Byron. All right, so um, as we move on to the next step, we go save parameters again. We don't want to lose that autotune information by turning off the AC. Now we're ready to actually do some rotational checks. Now as you walk, work through, you see it shows you, this particular page shows you the state of the actual the drive, what its state is as we're looking at it. It's okay, the drive hasn't tripped for any reason. It's ready to go in the bit. When we do the start, you'll see the start will have a go to green like normal. Now as a precaution, because we don't know really too much about uh, the setup of the motor, we're going to actually set the, um, the current limit. We're going to put this down to a low number. We're turning a bare shaft on my motor, so we don't let it try to take off on us or anything until we tech do some of these other checks along the way. Okay, and now, so we got a current limit set. This will still turn my motor into the, into the training section or the training room. So I'm just going to start it at this, at zero speed. Okay, we see the field comes up to strength. You see it's controlling at the 0.72 amps. That's parameter 145. That's the actual field current. Remember I said it's a current controller. So if everything's in you know, a motor nameplate's right, that's the current that you should go to. That's setting for parameter four that you actually set up in the uh, initial setup of the drive. Now right now it's not rotating because I haven't given it a speed reference. So let's just run it up the speed in uh, armature voltage seed feedback. This little control over to the right here will let me uh, take the speed up of the motor. And see if you see back here in the back, there's my motor turning. Now for some reason, this screen isn't updating. Let me see if it, I can get it to update. Yeah, see, it's changing screens now. Now you see, everybody see the screen up at the top here? Right here? Okay. These are the diagnostic screens, and I'll just show you something while it's running. If we go over to, whoops. Got to turn off my highlighter and get rid of that. So while this is running just at a, a slow speed, I'm going to go over and dive in here and show you what these diagnostics look like and what they actually mean. If you go to the um, top level, di this is in the product manual, but it's uh, worth mentioning here. So the drive by default, when it's powered up and at the top level, it blinks between these two screens you'll see in blink over here. And so if you look at, we're on the one that says RJSC at the end, that tells you the state of the control inputs, whether they're on or, or off. Like if somebody says, hey, the drive won't start, you can quickly go over and look. If the C is open, the co-stop is open, somebody hasn't reset an E-stop, or there's something wrong in that circuit. So you see a normal run condition is 1011. That's a normal, the run is on, meaning the SCRs are enabled, the R. The S means the contactor's in, and the coast means that it's not, it's a permissive, it's still good. And when it blinks back to that screen, you'll see it blinks back a few seconds between. It says the field is at 100%. The current's really negligible, 1%. And then the uh, speed reference is uh, the one other one, well, that's the actual feedback, the speed feedback is 60%. Thanks, you see between the reference, it's 61. It's around dithering a little bit around 60. Now the other one is this tells you this S ref when it switches over. So that's the actual reference. And then the current limits, that remember I set that to 10% to start by default. So they're both set to 10%, which is enough to do the job because I'm only pulling 1% current. So I can do this because I don't have any load, of course, and check rotation and any of the other things I may need to do at this point in the, in the startup. Now you can run it up to full speed while it's uncoupled if you like. I'll just take it back up. We'll take it all the way up to full speed. And you'll see it's speeding up and it becomes a blur with this, this, the display on the front. So you see I haven't, I'm in armature voltage feedback. I'm running at full speed. 100% reference, 100% feedback. Now, armature voltage has a little error into it because it, you know, it's just looking at volts. It's not looking at actual true indication of speed. So we're gonna we're gonna stop it. 
I'll just hit the stop button and you'll see it ramp down. Now my reference is still up at full speed. I'm just using the ramp built into the drive. Thank you. Okay, it stopped. Now I'm going to take this reference down to a low number because of our next step we're going to be doing. I can either enter the value here, I'll just say 5% over here. Okay. And then let's go to the next step in our procedure. So we had control of the motor through the entire speed range. And let's go to the next step here. And now the now we calibrate the armature volts. Now, you see I'm at 500 volts on the armature. If uh, we look, let's just run, run it back up at speed. We'll take it back up. And we've got a 10 second ramp in here, so it'll take a little while to get to get full volts. So you see the speed reference ramp ramping up and the speed feedback. Okay, we're at full speed. And you can see our voltage is pretty much right on the money. Now we can adjust it down with this armature voltage trim. Say it's a little hot. You know, at five, say it's 505 volts or something along those lines. We can actually slow it down by increasing and decreasing this number. You can actually reduce the volts. You can increase it, but you can decrease it. You see how I'm bringing the volts down and the speed? So you get about a 10% of the range of the volts based on changing this voltage trim. You can always, if you're a little over, you can bring it down. If you're a little low, you'd have to stop the drive and bump up this armature voltage on 18. If for some reason the motor is not wound properly and it's off a little bit from the nameplate, you can fix that. So we're happy in armature voltage. We got the voltage set right. So let's... Uh, Let's go, we're, I've got an encoder on this motor, so we're going to look at how you add the encoder to the equation. Any questions before we move on? Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to, well, let's just go to switch to the encoder screen. And what you can tell here, you see, now we've got to set some other parameters. Now, the ones that you can, you can't, I've actually got a, um, 1024 encoder. If I try to enter that in, you see it squawks at me because you can't change that one while the drive's running. So if you ever see this message, say it won't let you do it in the front panel either. But if you if you try to change something that the drive won't let you do while it's running, it'll give you a warning of some description in the display or in savvy. So what I'm going to do is stop it again. This is just a typical wiring diagram of how we have the encoder hooked up in the big scheme of things. We have a, uh, even if you have an A in its complement and a B in its complement, you really only need A and B, one of the, one of the pairs, one, or one of each type coming into your encoder. All right, so let's put the PPR in there. It's a 1024 PPR encoder. Now, you want quadrature to be enabled. If somebody accidentally changed it, to disable, that puts you in a different mode for the type of encoder. This drive can handle a, an encoder that has a pulse train and a sign encoder input, you know, direction I'm effectively. So if you have a direction and a pulse train, which is more prevalent overseas than in the US, um, you, you can turn on, off, I'm sorry, off the quadrature enable and then use it in that kind of, for that type of encoder. We got full quadrature and complements, so we're going to go to leaving the quadrature enabled. Now, the um, if we go and go ahead and start it, let's start it at a, at a low level level. Let's just put it. Let's put it. I don't know, five percent speed, so we can see what's going on, and we'll just start it. Now, you see. That, that sign on the encoder is the same polarity as the reference sign. You see it's 5%, and this is positive. Now I'm going to force the encoder to be inverted. The reason I bring this up is that you want to check these two, as it says down here, that these are both the same sign, plus, both of them plus or both of them minus. Now I'm going to put it in invert mode so that it, it will give us a different indication here. Yeah. 
So if you there's another parameter in the drive where you can actually see the sign of the encoder. So the so right now the 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 motor's going the opposite direction. It says the same value here. I think there's a there's another parameter that gives you the actual sign there. But we I know this is correct, so I'm going to stop it again and put it back into the non-invert. Let me just show you how this works in the in the drive. I'm going to open up the device directory. And we'll dive into the drive where we can see the actual block diagram. And if we go into here, the calibration menu, and zoom down here, this is how the the encoder. Here's our our parameters that are in our quick start, the PPR. Then it comes through the invert non-invert sign. Now the 709 parameter. Let me, um, I'm going to add that to a dock. That's the one we should see that's inverted. I think we're looking at actually this one, but let's see if that's true. So what I'm going to do is uh, turn it back to the invert sign and start it. You see how it's negative now? That's the one we should have on this page. We'll have to correct that. But that's the number that 132 should be this one to know the sign of the encoder. I forced it to be the wrong sign there. I usually recommend swapping the ex external leads to the A and the B pulses to change the sign. But if you need, you know, if you can't get to the encoder and the like, that's a way to invert your encoder sign. So I'm going to put this back to normal, and then we'll just do one more check to make sure the sign's right. Okay, you see there, so we got the right sign there. So now we're going to stop it and we're going to close the loop on the encoder. Okay. So once we're happy there, we're going to change this into encoder feedback. Okay. And now before we take the current limit, limit up while encoder feedback, we're going to run it again so that we don't try to take off if there's something else going on with our encoder. And you see we're in control in encoder feedback now. So we have complete control of this. And you'll watch as we go up in speed. Let's just go up. You'll see you'll get the exact right RPM where we were a little fast before because the, the motor is off a little bit on its nameplate. So you see we're at 1750 for the encoder RPM here. Everybody see that? It's bouncing around a little bit because we haven't done any tuning on the speed loop at all, but it looks pretty good overall. And let's erase that. Okay. So since we've got that done, we can actually... You can actually turn, I'll just turn it started again. We can actually, while it's running, you can take this current limit back up to 100%. And you'll see when you go back over to the display, when it switches to the I limit page, they're both at plus and minus 100%. Okay. Now, if we weren't field weakening, when we save the parameters here, if we did, if we weren't field weakening, we could click the finished here, and we, we're done, and you you get congratulated for commissioning it. But we're going to actually set up the rest of this to go above base speed, okay? So let's go into field. See how we do this next step of the field weaken, okay? Now the uh, the thing we need to know is okay, what was the pin one ten? We can't turn on field weakening while it's running, so I'm going to stop it so we can set this up. And I'm just going to zoom in here so you can see the parameters. And let me open one more calculation we had ahead of time. And if we go into the, um, it's in our uh, actual motor nameplate. So there's one other calculation you see here that needs to be done. 
And what this does is it, it by default, the drive is set up for going as low as 10% of the field, which is a pretty wide speed range, but it can do, it can go through that entire range. You know, if you had a, a five to one or, you know, even a 10 to one motor, you could go down to actually 10% of it before it hits a hard clamp in the drive. The drive won't let you put the field actually at zero because then it would try to run away on you. But this is a precaution to set it to nominally where the low end of the field is. So remember, we started at 0.72. That's base speed field current, right? And when we get up to the 2300 RPM, we're weakening as low as 0.39. Now what we're trying to figure out is this percentage that needs to be entered in for the field weakening. We don't let it go below 10% under what the, the low end should be. Okay, that's what this 90% multiplier is. It's giving us a little bit of lee, re, leeway so that we don't hit right at the value and then have to start pumping the armature voltage back up. So we're going to put in over here, based on this math here, 48.75 for the lowest we'll let the field go. And then we'll see what it actually weakens down to a little later. Now I'm going to uh, go ahead and enable this, our field weakening. And I'm going to, this gets into how you drive savvy again, but what I'm going to do is put some parameters in a, a little dock so that we can look at the profile in addition to the motors over here. So we look at the, um, let's look at the ramp output. So we got a dock right here. We'll, we'll uh, start one here. And what I'm going to do is uh, go into another window and I'm going to open up my drive and just pop some parameters in there really quickly. I'm going to save this while I'm on it. And then I'm going to find, you can use this find parameter dialog in Savvy when you're building docs, which gets to in our Savvy training. But say I want uh, the ramp output. If I type ramp, anything with the ramp show in the name will show up here. So I want the... Um, the ramp speed reference, that's a good one. That's going to give me the value that the speed is at. We're going to start it from zero, so we'll uh, change that value. It gets reset automatically at start. Let's look at the, um, the total uh, speed reference that shows up over here. I'm going to take that one out. So this is the actual total reference. And let's bring in the speed feedback. Let's look at the current. I know that's on the second page here. And so let's see which one we want. Let's look at the current demand. And then on the left side of this one, we got the actual current percent coming out. So what this will do is it'll give us an indication of uh, what the profile as it ramps up. And then the last thing we'll find is a, uh, let's find a start signal. Now the, um, there's the terminals where they come in. But what I want to do is go inside the, the actual contactor control block. And we'll use this guy and this guy. So there's our trend we're going to look at. And what a, the way you look at this over time. So we'll separate these once we get running. It'll make be clear what's actually happening. We're going to, let's just do one minute. Now we're going to go, now that we're in encoder feedback and we should go above base speed, let's start the drive. So there's our start signal. Okay. And here's our, here's when we started, it reset the ramp and you see it's separated. Speed reference is the purple and the green the speed feedback. You see there's a little S in that curve. And then the current didn't really shoot up much at all because we don't really have much in the way of load. 
not much current at all. So now we can actually look at this while it's running and say we want to go reverse since this is a region drive. We can go through zero. We're ramping through the we're at going down to zero speed. You see we'll stop and turn around, go the other direction, go just ramp it up to full speed. We're only pulling two percent even of nine amps, so there's no load really effectively other than the armature. And then if we want to stop it, we just hit the stop button and you'll see the stop happens right away. It stays started until it reaches zero speed. And it ramps and then the contactor drops out. So we'll just pause that for a second. So these are running through the cycle. That's actually we commissioned to drive from start to finish. Um, just using the savvy software. Now when you go through to connect to your through the serial port, mine's hooked up to my drive at my desk, but I'll show you how to connect it real quick. We'll add one more drive to our, our presentation up here. I'm going to do the discover on serial port right here. Everybody see that? And what I'm going to do is select my drive on my desk because I've, I've still got my cable cables all plugged in here. So if I say discover my PL series on my serial port and I say OK, assuming my drive set up right, which may be a fallacy, but let's see. You do have to set two parameters in the front of the drive to actually get it to communicate. I'm going to delete this and start over again so, so I'll show you the reminder. So if you go under discover on serial port, DC, you have to set, you see these drive setup notes? Now it's building a manual because I downloaded the latest uh, version a little earlier today. But it's going to build a savvy manual so it'll tell you what to change. And I'll get to the screen on my own drive while we're doing this. So this reminder will get tell you, if you forget, most people do. These are the two parameters. Just zoom in a little bit. That you need to interact with. You need to, in the, in the serial uh, links menu, you need to set pin 188 to ASCII mode and you need to set pin 187 to the baud rate you select. Now by default it's you see it, it goes to 19.2 and that's how I've set my drive up. Okay and generally you should I'll just say create this graphic file. This is a place where it stores your if you are doing SFD drawings while you're online with the drive I'm just going to put this on my desktop. This is my, I'm just going to call this uh, PL graphic. This is where it stores your work because there's nowhere else to store it. It'll store it on your local drive while you're actually talking to the to the drive online here. So that's that's a serial. It's not as fast as it is on Ethernet. But if you dive into it, let me just go in here and load default graphics. It has the same drawings that my other drive has. I just loaded the graphics. You can edit this and actually save it for documenting your drive even if there isn't a speedy on board. I'm just using a 232 port, a USB to 232 port adapter. And then uh, the, the cable that comes with the drive allows you to communicate with it. And you can do everything you can do in Savvy uh, with this interface and then have it as a document of how you set the drive up. Just wanted to show that because some people use that and they don't have a, a Speedy. The Speedy makes life a lot easier. It's faster and the trends are real snappy. But if you, do, you can still do these features with a standard uh, drive and a cable if you get Savvy installed on your computer. Now before I move on to some other topics, um, is there any questions? I'll open it up and hopefully somebody can um, 
comment on something they may need to fill in the gap on. Anybody have any, any feedback? So, so a question came up about swapping A and not A or na B and not B. You only have A and B coming up, whether it's both A and B positive or A and B not. Um, you just need to swap the B and the A, and that'll change the sign for you. Now, if you got all four channels, which we don't need on this drive, but if you do on like a AC drive, you can either swap the A and the not A for the B and the not B, or actually if you swap the A and B, the, the two A's, it'll reverse the rotation too, but it's not as clear as swapping them as a group. But of course, swap them, check them, and then make sure it's right before you throw it into feedback, and whether it's AC or DC. Make sure your, your sign is correct. Any other questions before I move on to just a couple of things to touch on? We've got about, well, we're about an hour, but we started a little late, so I'll go a little over. Anybody have any questions? Well, let me introduce you to something that you may or may not know about in the, the way we ship the drives now. Now, I'm going to dive, um, go into what's called a savvy panel on my computer. And you see, I've, I've got, uh, one's my drive on my desk. That's this one that's blank over here. This particular one here is, is one that ships with the drive when there's a speedy fitted. And it's a diagnostic and commissioning screen that you can either use on your computer in addition to the quick start we got, or you can put it into a display that is mounted on the door of the enclosure, one of our touchscreens. If we go back to, um, I don't know if I kept my, uh, let's go back to uh, driveweb.com. So these, if you put a speedy, one of those drives, those boards into your drive that has an ethernet port, you can actually use this touchscreen for diagnostics on the enclosure door. If you uh, use the Savvy Panel touchscreen. And I'll just show you, this is built in. When we ship the drive, we put this program, if there's a speedy board on it, we'll put this program in as it before it ships. And it gives you, let me go back to the right screen. It gives you a canned uh, diagnostic that's built into the... Uh, Sorry here. It's this one over here. I've been hitting the wrong button. So, so this is actually built into, uh, or loaded into dr the drives with a speedy as we ship it out of the factory. So these screens are built in. So if you plug a screen in after the fact to a, one, a drive that has a speedy, if you haven't modified it, you'll have these diagnostics on the front door by mounting a screen on it. So you see these are all the basic things, a little more intuitive than just the, what's in the front panel of the drive, but it allows you in those cases where you have to keep the door shut to be able to, to look around inside the drive without having to, you know, if there's criteria for arc safe environment or the like, where you can't really open the door, this will tell you a lot about what's going on as well as with the engineer mode, you can actually go through the quick start on the front panel. So if we enter, go into enter mode, the, the password on there will take us into the commissioning screen. Just like we were doing before, you can walk through the commissioning. You see all those settings we just got with our auto-tune and all, we can actually walk through the entire auto-tune through the screen without having to even fire up our computer, for that matter. Now when you go back to operator, you'll have to unlock it again to go back in there. But this allows you to do diagnostics. The operator can go, um, hey, it looks like the, the run isn't coming on. So if we go to the, the digital inputs, here are the digital input status of the terminals, just like the front of the display. And you'll see these change if we run it again from, the, from back here. We don't really need this trend anymore. And let me see, here's my control back here. So let's say we start it. 
So these are the encoder pulse. There, it doesn't catch every one, of course, because they're twi toggling so fast. But if we go back to the operator screen, you can see we're running. It tells you I'm running in reverse at 1750 RPM. Okay. Now the fit. The reason I, even though I put it into, in, uh, I didn't do that final calibrate. So let's get to that. Just reminded me. We we set it all up for field weakening. But let's just uh, add a couple of parameters back in, and then we'll finish this thing up. So I'm going to open, have to open a new, whoops, not a finder window. New viewer. We're going to open up. I wish I'd save that savvy panel I just built, but I threw it away. We're just going to add a couple of things in here that... Um, So let's put start in there. Um, control inputs, contactor. We're going to put that guy in there. And let's just look at uh, armature volts. to voltage percent monitor. Add the parameter dock. And let's just look at the field. Anywhere you see that little picture of the drive, you can right click on it and find your what you're looking for. And let's go in here. There's our field demand. And I'm going to do field current in there too. Okay. Now we're running at full speed. We've set it up for field weakening, but we didn't do the last step, which I'll show you right now. And let's just go into show trend there again. Okay. So we're running along, we're at full field, we've started the drive, and uh, let's move the field down a little bit so it's, it's a little closer to our armature. Okay, so now if we go to another viewer, and let's just see how you get that final speed match you want. We go back to the quick start. We were in the final step there. I got sidetracked, so let's go back in there. So here's our field weakening set up. The field weakening is enabled. We put the lower clamp on it. And now if we go to the what we've got to do is adjust the max speed of the uh, of the of the actual encoder to get it sped up. Now you can you can enter the the value directly, but you don't want a big step change as you're doing your speed match. So we're just going to bump it up in small increments, and we'll reach a point where it'll start to weaken the field. You see the field weakening, the green line. So we're going to get to 2300, which is nameplate on the motor, just by bumping it up in, in 10 RPM increments. There goes the field diving down. So now we're up at full speed. That's the last step that we glossed over before, was set, setting up the final field setting. Now, if we're running and we're happy with the, the way it's done, we can just save here. And we finish commissioning the basics of the drive, and we can move on to other uh, 
type of uh, uh, movement or a design wise. Now watch when we stop, we'll just stop it. You see the field comes right back up to full strength while it ramps down. And then we're, we've finished up everything. And that's when you get your congratulations as you start commissioned the drive. Now there's one thing I wanted to go over. It's a little new to this, but I wanted to show you how easy it is to do some of these other type of things. But I was just going to show you real quickly how to use one of our application notes to change the way the drive works. So if we go into, uh, I'll just show you what we're going to do real quickly. We have an app note that allows you to, in the big scheme of things, here's the wiring change you see here. So say you've got um, a unipolar speed reference, not bipolar like I've got here where I put a plus or minus 10 volt signal. But you need a reversing function, a digital reverse. It comes up quite often. Now you could follow this and do it in the front panel as you see here, but see, you, if you look at what we're doing, all we're doing is, is by this, this whole program, it'll make a little more sense when I draw it, but we're just changing the multiplier that's in the analog input to actually change the sign of what's going into the ramp input. That's what all this up here will effectively do. You see when we, um, I'm going to use terminal 15 and set the values to plus or minus 100%. That's connected up to the ratio of the terminal. And by multiplying it by the right sign, I get the value coming into here to actually reverse it through a digital input. And it's just sort of to show you the capabilities you can, you can actually do with the uh, DriveWeb software. It makes it a lot easier to do these kind of implementations. So I'm just going to go back to my open a new viewer and we'll just actually do it real quick. So we go into this PLX here. Okay, and I'll just we'll just do it won't take but a minute here. So here's our ramp speed reference here. So if we dive into that and look at it, we've got this value here that this linear scale this is what we're going to hook up to is this multiplier right here. It's called linear scaling factor, UIP4. And now, by default, if I recall correctly, terminal 14 is not in the drawing by default. You see down here where it says DI, let me just drop it in here. And I'm going to take these two and put them down a little lower. And so terminal 14, this will be, we're going to call this Instead, we're going to add it, and we're going to call it the reverse function by renaming the function block. And if you look at the uh, program, so that's got to have two values, plus and minus 100. So we go in here. So the low value, we want to have 100%. And the high value, we want to have minus 100. Okay. Now it's not connected to anything by default. Now in Savvy, in the drive you would have to go and say what, where do you want it to go. With Savvy, all I got to do is draw my line to where I want it to go, just like this. Yeah. Let go of it, and now you'll see this 1.0 is still there, just like the app note would hopefully direct you. And if we go over to my um, Don't need that. Wrong place. Let's bring in the uh, here. And uh, oh, I didn't put it in here. Let me get drag it in there real quick. So that's on. That input is connected to digital output 5 of my device, open device directory, go in here, DO5, 
So this is actually going to be controlled by, let's have a little two position switch here. Okay. Now what, what can happen is when I turn that on and off, you see how the switch is turn, switching on the other one? The window up here? Let me just highlight it real quick. Watch this switch toggle with, with my uh, signal down here. And so when I turn this on, it puts a, di a different value into the multiplier. And if we drag this out so you can see what it changes to, you see it goes plus or minus 100% effectively. Okay. So let's just watch how that works real quick. So we got our, our setup right here. We're at full speed. So let's just run it again back up to full speed. Okay. And now let's, uh, if we throw this switch now, we didn't really change the polarity, but we effectively reversed whatever the reference is, make it go in the opposite direction. Okay. And then we'll stop it. Does anybody have any questions before we wrap it up? Well, I appreciate y'all coming for the uh, session. We're gonna ha we've recorded this, so it'll be up at our website um, in the near future. And you'll be able to refer to it if you need a refresher. Say you're going on a startup and you want a refresher how to start the drive up. This is uh, going to be available to you. Thank you for taking the time to come. If there are no more no questions, I'll wrap it up. Yes, you can do AC drives. Someone asked, can you do AC drives with Savvy? And yes. Uh, we actually did a training session. It's already up at the website that uh, goes through a session just like this with the AC drives. Bob asked that question, but it is available up at driveweb.com and bardak.com. Well, thank you for coming. Any other questions? Well, thank you. thanks again, and we'll... Talk to you soon. Bye.